Hey guys, welcome back to the channel once more. Uh, thanks for tuning around, it's been a week thus far and we're, we're doing great. So um, today we're having a look at beat them up movements. So old games such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Power Rangers. So how do they do it? How do they move around in a 3D space, but you know, as a side scroller kind of deal. So we're gonna be having a look at that. It's fairly simple. It's just a regular, <laughs> a regular script. Um, however, we do a little bit of tweaking with the camera and also the angle at which we see our sprites. So heads up going into this, we're gonna be using a character controller. Now, if you're used to use a rigid body in the past, well, it's basically the same exact thing because character controller inherits from rigid body. So just use a character controller, it's much better. It takes care of collisions for us as well. We're also gonna be using our own grounded function that is based off Raycast. And finally, we're hooking up our animation state machine from previous episodes. Quick message before we jump right into it. I'd like to thank the five new patrons this week. So those are Car Seat, Andreas, Nightmare Dev, Steen, and then Yume as well. So I'm reading off the list, yes. But thank you guys so much. Um, and if you guys want to support us on Patreon, link is always down below in the description. It makes this happen and it makes this, well, worth it, you know? Great. All right, so for today's episode, we're going to need two things. One, a floor, and also second, a character. Um, we have these two things from previous episode, of course, if you'd like to, you can download them on the website. Let's get started. Also, do note that our character has animation, so we're going to hook up the animation, or sorry, the animator today as well, and we're going to send data to the animator so it can move and actually have animation while we're moving. Okay, and also my floor has a collision mesh. Really important we mentioned that. Um, okay, all right, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to create a brand new object. I'll call it player. It's a empty object with nothing beneath it. And I like to do that so I can separate my logic with my model. Um, my model is the character Pepe. I'll put it beneath player. And on top of player over here, I'll add the, um, the 3D character movement that we're going to be using today. I'll just stick to the convention, call it beat them up movement. We can even call it motor. And um, let's go ahead and create that new script. It's actually quite a complicated script today. I hope you guys are ready for a ride. Um, we're going to be testing the floor with our own solution. We're not going to be using the character controller one because it's not really super accurate. We are also going to be, as I said, sending some animation over to the state machine. So we're going to start off by declaring a couple of fields under logic. One of them is going to be uh, something we assign manually, so the animator. In case you don't have animator, in case you don't have animation, don't worry because the way we're going to write our code is that if you don't have it, it's simply not going to call our function um, that makes sure this is animated. Next up, we have the private vector three slope normal. Slope normal is going to define exactly what is the slope we're on right now. So are we on a 45 um, degree angled floor? If so, we're gonna be using that logic to curve our movement direction. So I'll actually show you what it does a little bit later on, but basically if you don't do that, um, you're going to have a little staggering when you go downhill and you don't want that. So we're gonna be fixing it by keeping track of the slope normal. And finally, one more for grounded. Um, this one is going to be assigned every frame and basically it's an expensive operation to look if you're grounded or not using Raycast, which is what we're gonna be doing. So if we only, if we have to do it every frame, let's make sure we store it in a value and we can have all the other scripts around use this one instead, instead of calling it a second time. So like running this twice a frame, uh, not something you wanna do. We have a section for movement config. In here, there's gonna be a bunch of field that you can tweak, configure to have the movement you want. So most of them are going to be serialized field. So we start off with two speed value. The first one is speed X. So how fast are you gonna go on the X axis? The second one is speed Y, but technically it could be speed Z because you're moving on the Z axis. So like towards the back and moving forward. Um, yeah, so you could call this speed Z. I'll keep it to Y because it's a little bit more it makes more sense in my head. <laughs> uh, next up we have the gravity. So how how hard are you gonna be influenced by gravity? So how fast are you going to fall? Jump force is how quickly are you going to jump? Um, and when you do jump, like how high will you go? Um, next up we have terminal velocity, which should be next to gravity. So basically uh, gravity is going to be reduced every frame. At one point you cannot fall faster than a certain point. So that certain point is going to be terminal, uh, terminal velocity. So you're going to incrementally go faster as as you're not grounded but at one point we have to cap this we have to make sure that there, there's a certain terminal velocity basically which reminds me we forgot something over here so let's go back at the top 
private float vertical velocity. This is where we're going to be keeping um, our speed in Y. That's why this one is confusing, but okay. And finally, one last section, it's the ground check raycast. And here are the value I use. They're going to work for me. They might not work for you. And that's why they're all serialized. You'll know exactly what these are once we apply them. But basically they will determine, um, they will determine where your raycasts are being cast from and how far down they will go. Quick heads up, we are using raycasts because I find those to be a lot more reliable than the uh, character controller grounded function. If I use something unreliable and like one frame, just even for one frame, I enter a, a falling state or I'm not grounded. If I'm not grounded, I will enter a falling state that will trigger something on my animation state machine. And it's just going to look weird. And I might also miss um, a frame where I'm trying to jump, but I can't jump because the character thinks I'm not grounded. There's a bunch of reasons why you wouldn't want to use the uh, default one. So we're making our own solution. But let's start with awake in which we are going to get a reference to our character controller. So controller, get component type of character controller. No big deal here. Do know that every time we're using get component like this, it has to be um, a component that is on top of the same exact object. All right, so next up, you're going to create yourself an update in which we check every frame our input. So we need our input. That I like to put in a whole new function. This is going to change whether or not you're using a controller if you have different, um, you know, if you have different input schemes. But in my case, I'll be using the default one from Unity. So here at the top, I did uh, new vector is equal to basically it's a vector that's zero. I don't have to do that. I can just do vector three that's zero. That also works. I just like being fancy a little bit, so I use the default. Um, and then you assign x and y. X is bound to your horizontal axis, which is A and D, left arrow key and right arrow key, and vertical is W and S, up arrow key and also down arrow key. Now, um, take notice that I've put get axis raw, which means as soon as I press it, say I press on A, I will get minus one. And then on top of that, um, I normalize my vector. So what happens here is if I don't normalize it and I'm pressing on say W and D, this is what I get. So I get a vector that looks like this. Um, so X is going to be one, W is going to give me one here and then zero. This vector is actually bigger than one. So if you're moving around in the scene and you're using this as a speed value, then you're gonna go faster in diagonal. And that's not cool. So what you do is you normalize. Now, if you actually like having your get access with a small buffer, like you're going fast over time, um, then this is going to put it back on one. So let me just add a small line of code here that I didn't have in my other code, but I'll do it in case you want that. Uh, so it's going to normalize your vector only if it's bigger than one. All right, having this done, we now have our input. So we know what the, the user is actually pressing on his keyboard. Our second step is to take those input, put them in a move vector, and also make sure that we multiply them by speed. Now be really aware that what I've did over here is that I've also swapped over um, the y and the z axis. So if you guys remember, input vector is x, y, there's no z. However, here I've did x, I put y on zero, that's our vertical velocity later, and then z is now here. Why? Well, because unity, um, the y axis is actually up and down. So what is going to control that is our gravity, our jump force, and so on, not the movement key. The movement key are going to push it further back or you know, closer to the camera. And now we're going to skip a couple of steps for now, and we're going to move our character, see if it works well in the game. So let me go ahead on my player character. I will add my character controller. This is something we need. I will also add my beat them up movement, which is right there. There we go. And I do not need to put the animator in there because there's nothing referencing it right now. Let's hit play, see what kind of result we get. So our character moves left and right, and it also got pushed out of the ground. So that's because our character controller capsule is actually, um, has an offset. But as you can see, we can, we can go like further back. We can come this way as well. And if we walk off the stage, well, we don't fall. So there's no gravity right now, but we'll fix that in a moment. Let's first start by fixing our capsule. As you can see, it's all the way there on the floor. I'm going to put one on the Y axis. So I end up with something like this. No, it won't mess up my mesh anymore. All right, so now it's time for us to start laying down the grounded function. I just call it grounded like this. What I'll do is it's a big one basically. And I'll just give you the things. I'll give you the function. I'll copy paste it in here. You can freeze the frame and um, have a look at it. It's a very big one. Or you can also download it directly from the website. 
I'll quickly run you through it though. So first we check whether or not our vertical velocity is bigger than zero. That means are we currently jumping or are we currently like being affected by something that pushes up? If that's the case, then we're not grounded. We're not basically on the floor uh, or we do not want to be on the floor. Then uh, if that's the case, then we're not grounded. We just quit right there. Then what I do is I declare a Y ray. So Y ray is basically just a value in Y where all my ray casts are going to start. I have a total of five ray casts that I'm going to be casting down on the floor only if I am not grounded. If the first one hits the floor, then we just do a return and it means that during that frame, one of our ray casts uh, was tested and we, we know whether or not um, we were grounded. Now this is all dynamic code. It's going to adapt to the character controller uh, capsule, this one, and it's going to basically, if I just do it real quick uh, and I put myself in 2D, you'll see it a little bit better. So give it a second. Now, if we go on our character, check out the bubble. What it's going to do is at the very beginning, it's going to go for the first ray, the middle ray. It's going to go right in the center, go up a little bit, say that high, and then cast a ray cast that's going to be this long. So a little bit longer than the than the distance you had to travel to go up. And using this, well, we'll know whether or not if he's on the floor. If that one doesn't work, what we're going to do is we go all the way on this side, like right around here, and we do the exact same thing. So we cast a ray from about this direction. Same thing here, same thing here, and also we're doing it in 3D, so you have all the four uh, corners of the capsule. Now the reason we're doing it with so many different ray casts is just to have a look at this. So basically, if we only send a ray cast from the bottom there, and we're right about here, technically, we're not grounded anymore because the raycast starts right here. So we're going to avoid that by having multiple raycasts and also having a raycast and not a sphere cast allows us to get the normal of the floor at the same time. So if we're around there, then we're gonna know that the, the normal of the floor is going to be you know, towards that direction. Having that said, let's have a look at our code. So here is the full line. It's actually a little bit taller than that. Uh, I could have put it in multiple line. I should have actually. I invite you to put that in full screen and actually have a look at all the other one and I'll split those line um, actually. So let's see, where can I split this? Okay, there we go. This is it right here. So if writing all of that bothers you, make sure you go over to the website and download the actual package. It would save you a lot of work and it would help us out quite a lot. Um, right, so, um, I hope you freeze the frame. I hope you're ready to move on because we are moving on. Now that we know whether or not our character is grounded using this function, what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to check. So if grounded, and remember, since we start in the value, we don't call this anymore. We only have to call it once per frame and that's the perfect place to call it. But I don't want to see grounded with the function next to it uh, anymore because it's an expensive operation. Our raycasts are very small, so it's not that expensive, but it's still something that's quite heavy, usually. And don't get me started on people that do infinite raycasts. That's just, that's just crazy. Okay, so here we are in here. What do we do if we're on the floor? Well, if we are on the floor, we're going to apply a slight gravity, something that is very, very subtle. How do we apply gravity? We're going to set vertical velocity to minus one. Now, what else do we do when we are on the floor? Well, we can check whether or not we're pressing on, um, on spacebar and using that knowledge, we can modify then the vertical velocity and put it on jump force. Okay, going back at this real quick, we, since we're on the floor, we're gonna check, okay, do you press spacebar? If you do, we're going to assign your vertical velocity, which is basically your gravity kind of value, we're going to assign it to something very high and very positive. So maybe eight in this case, yeah. So jump force eight, which means on the next frame, you're going to go up by eight meters a second. Of course, it's not gonna go that fast. Gravity is going to go against it as well, but um, yeah. Oh, and also since we're jumping off the floor, let's make sure we reset the uh, slope normal to vector three dot up which is basically the value you have when you have um, a straight floor. All right, now what happens if we are not on the floor? Well, basically the exact same thing. So let's take our two value. Slope normal is gonna be up. We're gonna make sure the slope normal is not set. Vertical velocity, well, that's going to be equal to minus equal gravity. So if on the last frame we jump, we were at eight, then on this frame, we're gonna be on something like 7.5 or are something of the sort and so on and so on. So it's gonna go down quite fast. 
And since it's going to go down quite fast, let's make sure we clamp it up by saying, okay, so if you go, like if you go beneath the minus terminal velocity, let's assign that and let's stick it there. You're going to be trying to go down every frame, but we're going to get it back to that level because you're on the fastest speed that you could technically fall. Also, if you're curious about the slope normal and you missed it, um, it's inside of the grounded function. If you actually hit something, like if you hit the floor, then we grab the normal of that floor using the same raycast we used to check if you were on that floor. So this is where we actually assign it. Um, and it's there in all the other functions as well. Okay, right, so now we have our operation. If we're grounded, we do this. If we're not grounded, we do that. We played around with the vertical velocity, but we never really assign it. So it's time for us to assign it. So going down here, apply vertical velocity to our movement vector. This is right before the move. Let's give this a try before we go and we create um, our little fix for the floor. So you can also see what it does if you don't. So I'm moving around, pressing on spacebar. I'm having the jump, as you can see. Now here is what I was mentioning earlier about um, the slope normal. So if we move our camera, say over here, yeah, this way, and we go down, I don't know if you saw it, we had a little bit of chunk there. It was not really pleasant to look at. So as you can see, we're not technically following the floor. We're like getting off this edge and then we're just falling. Like if we put our gravity on zero or like something very, very small, like zero, zero, one, this is what happens. That is not cool. That really messes up your movement in the game if you're trying to go fast. Plus on top of that, you're technically falling over here, which means, well, uh, since you're falling, you should be in a falling animation, but that's not what should happen. Speaking of animation, we're going to put them in the game really quickly. So when I assign my speed, basically that, that's four line and will go really very quickly, I promise. Let's just do it with me. Animator, set float. Um, the float we're trying to set, the trigger we're trying to set is called speed. Sorry, the parameter <laughs> we're trying to set is called speed. And we want move vector dot magnitude. So here is what's happening. If we do not have an animator, it's not going to run because we have our question mark next to it, which basically means if it's null, then don't do this. But if it's not null, set the float parameter called speed to the magnitude of the movement vector. Okay, we've got our first one, three more. Here, set boolean. Oops, not set bone, set boolean. Our boolean here is called grounded. You can find that in our animation state machine. And of course we set it by grounded because we kept our value. Next up over here, we have a trigger. So set trigger, that trigger is called jump. And we do not need to send any parameter. When it's a trigger, you just call it and it's going to snap to the jump animation. Um, and finally the vertical velocity as well. So we get it over here. This is also a float, so set float, vertical, velocity by vertical velocity amazing stuff and just like that we now have our animation by by the way guys um the values i was typing in those string fields i just want to remind you that they're right here in our animator and if you're trying to run the game right now you're going to have the same problem as i did which is basically forgot to put my reference so don't forget to drag and drop your character inside the animator field because that's the one you're going to be animating we could have done a um, get component in children, but it's really, meh, it's not really a thing we want to do. So technically right now I should be walking and I am grounded. If I press on this, I should be jumping. My animation state machine seems to work just fine down below. Like I see my value being updated. I see all these things being updated. Um, I just don't see the movement. I don't know why. Okay, so somehow I lost reference to my bone. I will fix this before I push over the package, but it's just kind of sucky. I can't show it to you right now. But trust me when I say they're moving, because if you click on the bones, like over here, you're going to see that, you know, my head has different rotation every frame. That is what's supposed to happen over there. Um, like if we go on the legs, legs are not moving usually. And if we press on spacebar, you can see them moving here position-wise. So my animations are working. They're just, however, broken right now, which is really bad for me when I'm trying to show you this thing. Um, but I'll fix it before I push the package, I promise. Having that said, I will add the final function here for today, which is going to sneak right in between the move and also the velocity check. If we're on the floor, angle or vector to match its curve. 
So I'm checking if whether or not the um, slope normal is not the default one. And if that's not the case, we're going to call follow floor, which is a nice little function that I put together. Um, and it's down there. It's going to be right after pull input. Now, I would love to explain to you what this does exactly, but I don't know how to do so. One thing, because I have to do it in English, and second, because I don't really have the math knowledge to do it anymore. Um, but it's a dot product using the the slope normal, so the, the normal of the floor. With that, I'm able to know in which direction you're supposed to go using a dot product. And if we have a look now in the game, is that the right side? Hmm, let's move the camera over to this way. Yep. So if we go over here, we're following the floor and we're never, if you have a look down there, we're never entering the jump or the falling state. We can if we're jumping, of course, but when we're on the floor, we stick to it and that is what matters. That's what's important for us. Okay, that's done. Okay, it was a big episode, guys. I hope you actually enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's a bunch of code. I hope I explained it well. If not, you can always download it on the website and uh, call it a day. Um, just know that we're going to be doing something very similar very soon, actually, with a state machine. Yep, we're putting that code in a state machine so we can split our walking state, our jumping state, falling state, and that's going to be useful for us in the future in case we want to have something like, hey, a gliding state or a floating state or all that kind of stuff. It's going to be very cool. But I will not explain the state machine. Uh, that's just going to be code I'll give away. If this video was useful to you or you enjoyed it, please leave a like in the description down below. Well, no, that's the comment. Also leave a comment because you're going to get some XP out of that. And uh, if you see my videos in the recommended section, just click on it. It's going to help me a little bit. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.